welcome you this morning to our Thought for Thursday. And I've been thinking lately as I've been reading through an account of a conversation between Nicodemus and Jesus. This man Nicodemus was one of the Pharisees, uh, one of the religious scholars, as it were, of the time of Jesus. And you probably know Jesus didn't get on particularly well, usually with the religious scholars. So this man came to Jesus at night and he had some questions. He had some big questions. And that's what I really want to just unpack with you today is the answer to the question that Nicodemus raised. And basically his question to Jesus is, what must I do to inherit the kingdom? And what that really means is, well, Jesus, what must I do to be saved? Well, the reply that Nicodemus got wasn't quite what he expected. In fact, it was a reply that he didn't fully understand. And Jesus said to him, Nicodemus, you've got to be born again. Well, at those comments, the, uh, the old scholar looked a little bit sideways at Jesus and uh, quizzically said, well, what do, you, what do you mean by that? Do I have to go back in my mother's womb? I'm, I'm a grown man. We've never seen this happen before. What do you mean? And Jesus said to Nicodemus, well, Nicodemus, you're a better scholar than that. I'm not talking about a physical rebirth. You have to be born again of the spirit. Well, Nicodemus would have known about these things, being a scholar it's perhaps not, perhaps not so plain to us, but let me try and help us understand a little more. Jesus was having another conversation with a Samaritan woman in John's Gospel in chapter 4, and it happened at a well. And this lady was quite remarkable, but part of that conversation gave rise to Jesus saying these words to her. He said, you must worship God in spirit and in truth in spirit and in truth. Very powerful words. And this lady seemed to understand these words better than Nicodemus seemed to un uh, understand Jesus' earlier answer. So we learn that God is spirit. And we go right back to the beginning of the Bible in, in Genesis there, and we learn that the Holy Spirit was, was at work, as it were. And the Holy Spirit was probably... A part of the intimacy that Adam and Eve had in the garden with Father God. And they were told not to do a certain thing. Everything was theirs. Everything they wanted. But typical man, what they hadn't got was the thing that they, they wanted and they were disobedient. And that was the time going back when man died spiritually. The part of man that was there to worship God had in effect died. That intimacy had gone. The very innermost part of, of us, this spirit, was created basically to worship God. That's when we're released. That's when we're truly who we're meant to be. Now, you see, animals have a body and they have a soul, but they don't have a spirit. We have a spirit and we read about that in the Bible. And this innermost part was lost, died in that garden. And since that time, we operate from our souls and our bodies only without the influence of the spirit because the spirit within us is kind of dead. No wonder we've got into a, such a mess because we're doing it our way. You know that song, I'll do it my way. That's what we've been doing. And the soul, which we understand in Greek, is made up of the, uh, of the uh, will and the intellect and the emotions that we have are governing what we do physically in the body. So wonderful when that part of us is governed by the Holy Spirit, as it were, but absolutely disastrous when it's not. In terms of world history, you see what's happened where whole civilizations have crumbled through the evil that's perpetrated into these ancient cultures as the spirit has not been God's spirit driving it forward, but really evil, it has to be said, has driven it. Humans, beings were dead in their trespasses. It says that in Ephesians, by the way, chapter 2 and, and verse 1. So we've been trying to live soulishly. That's really living without God. 
in our lives. And the word is that we've been lost. We've been a lost people. It says that in Luke chapter 19 and verse 10. That means that the problem is we don't really know who we are. We don't really know where we're going. And we don't know what we're here for. And that's pretty serious stuff. We may cover over the cracks a little bit. But we don't get behind the truth of that. And if this situation isn't corrected. Then we spend eternity in a very bad place. Of darkness, of fear, rebellion, hate, separated from God forever with no way back. But you see, Jesus brought us the way back. His death on the cross brought the way back. And he said, didn't he, I am the way, truth and the life. So the great and desperate need then is to come alive, to get back in touch with God. And this is what Jesus is offering to us today. He says, come to me. Come to me. And through him alone, there's no other way. God's life can come and bring us life. A life in all its fullness. A life that we've never known before. Unless we've experienced Jesus in our lives. The power of the Holy Spirit becomes the driver of our very lives. Body and soul united with the Spirit. As was promised. And to experience this life. We must ask Jesus to come. Live in us. And be our Lord and Saviour. But the Holy Spirit. Jesus comes into our lives. Our sins are washed away. Our sins are forgiven. Basically through his poured out blood. And we are given a new kind of life. The Holy Spirit. Having joined himself to our spirits. We read about that 1 Corinthians 6 and verse 17 and it brings our spirit from death to life it's born again those words from Jesus to Nicodemus born again and becomes what the apostle Paul says a new creation it becomes the driver of our whole life we receive life in all its fullness and not only have I read the words but I've experienced that in my own life In 1976, a long time back now, he filled me with his Holy Spirit and he has empowered me ever since to follow him. That's the best decision I ever made. You need to make a decision if you haven't made one already. He doesn't muscle into our lives. He gives us a choice. You choose life. Choose life in Jesus and choose it today. Don't waste any more time. Bye bye, everybody. And thank you for listening.